The Hawaii Symphony Orchestra keeping music alive online with a series that brings the symphony right into your home. And we talked with Executive Director Dave Moss about the popular production called Sounds of Resilience. We're enjoying the sounds of resilience in the Hawaii Symphony and had the pleasure of talking with Dave Moss about that. So tell me about this because this is something that you've done during this pivot in COVID times, but it really has taken off. Tell me about the sounds of resilience. Absolutely. Thank you so much. The Sounds of Resilience was our response to everything that's happening in our community currently. And as musicians and as artists, you know, we really see ourselves as being the sort of second responders. We help to heal. We help to uplift. Um, you know, we give reflection to the depressed and our anxious communities. And I, I think a lot of that uh, is what many of us have been feeling for the last now 10 months. And what evolved was a series of five live performances from the stage of the historic Hawaii Theater. These were live performances. We had a smaller group of musicians, not our normal 84 that we have on stage for our other performances, uh, but we were able to capture these live. So our audience could purchase a $20 ticket to view the show through our box office. and. You'd enter in uh, and you'd see the orchestra warming up on stage just as you would at the theater. Uh, and then you'd experience a 60 to 90 minute performance by the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra. As executive director of the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra, you never in your wildest dreams could have imagined that we would be in this world where you couldn't have your normal live performances. It quickly became a reality to me. Um, I actually joined the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra back on March 10th. Wow. Uh, just five days before our world completely shut down here in Hawaii. So we're going on about 10 months together in this community. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm neither a musician, I'm not a conductor, I am the executive director. So I do all of the administrative things, um, such as the strategic planning and the strategic implementation, uh, in, uh, implementation of these plans that have led us to the sounds of resilience. So the other part of my job is getting to program with the artistic team uh, the nearly 50 performances that we put on in a normal year. Uh, and so with that has been this opportunity to really program and be a little bit more reflective of our community here in Hawaii through the performances with the Sounds of Resilience. What do we hopefully have to look forward to with the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra? So as we go forward, and we're starting to do this with some of our programming now, but we aspire to be an organization that collaborates with local artists. Uh, we just worked with Ron Artis uh, the second uh, back in December. And, you know, I really aspire to continue our work with Ryan Taya, uh, in addition to up and coming artists, you know, Mike Love, Kimmy Minor, Josh DeSofi. Um, the list goes on and on. You know, I, I really think that's one of the ways we serve our community. You know, I, I think the other part of this for us is that we're learning a lot from this experience and being able to offer so much digital engagement. So it's no longer just about selling out 3,000 seats at the Blaisdell Concert Hall, which is what we used to define as success. But for us, through the television medium, through all the digital medium, we're reaching hundreds of thousands of people, uh, which is really important to the future of the work that the symphony is doing. So, you know, I, I really like to say that, you know, our top priority at the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra is, is one that is reflective of all Hawaii, that we're a symphony that's rooted in being an organization that reflects this whole state um, by being uniquely of, for, and by Hawaii. And so the future is that. The future is leading into that mission of the symphony orchestra. Well, I can tell that you are passionate and like to talk, and I heard you have a talk show. Is this true? <laughs> well, you know, I think a talk show might uh, might be a, a big word for it, uh, but I'll leave that up to my co-host, Iggy Jang, on that. Um, you know, back when we were going through all of this, one of the things that we were able to do is with our partner at uh, Hawaii Public Radio is offer some rebroadcast of our old performances. Uh, and before each live performance, Iggy would do these wonderful program notes and he would talk with the audience about what to expect in the performance. Um, and so we picked that up and we brought it into the digital realm. So every Tuesday, uh, we do tuning up uh, with Iggy and Dave from the Hawaii Theater. Uh, and it's a live show. And what we've done is we've 
pull back the curtain a little bit on the symphony. Um, you know, when you go to an orchestra concert, there's all of these words, concerto, symphony, principal, conductor, and it's a little bit like inside baseball. Uh, and, and for us, tuning up has been the opportunity to talk about the musicians and how do you get a seat in the orchestra and how do you what's life outside of rehearsal and how does how do things get programmed and all those sorts of things i'm grateful for the opportunity to continue creating community around the music which is what i think we all so miss uh being six feet apart is the community that we can build and i'm really proud of our organization for finding ways to continue doing that Oh, we love that. And you mentioned two of my favorite things, music and wine. So definitely need to find out and follow that along. Dave, thank you so much. And congratulations uh, for the success of South Resilience. Thank you so much. We greatly appreciate it. You know, it's yet another high world-class performance happening at the historic Hawaii Theater. And it's so great that they have been able to pivot and to bring these great performances right into homes, not just in Hawaii, but now you have that global reach that you can reach since it is online and it, it lives there forever. I've been there a few times, uh, mm -hmm. not as many times as a lot of people have been able to enjoy that such a beautiful place, but mm -hmm. uh, it is such a beautiful place whether you're there in person or you listen to the music um, online. It's just amazing. And so this is a great opportunity. Exactly. They host everyone too. A last concert I saw before everything went no live was Rick Springfield. <laughs> so, and that it, was... Wow. Yeah. That, <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, last, last thing I saw there was a Joe Moore play. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, been a while. We'll get back to those sometimes soon. But now for